63, the noes are 46, Schedule 3 will stand part. Members, the, we turn now to the debate on clauses 1 and 2. The question is that clause 1 and 2 stand part. Madam Chair. Chris Bishop. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Well, I haven't uh, had the opportunity to take a call so far uh, in this debate, <laughs> and I did, I was leaving it. Uh, but, well, so many of my erstwhile colleagues were so keen to speak on the substantive parts of this debate and what a terrible bill it has been. But I want to make a few suggestions now we come to the title and the commencement about what this bill should actually be called, because the name Families, Ackage, Income Tax and Benefits is a prosaic and boring title for the bill. What this bill should really be called is the Families Package Free Money for Millionaires Bill because the Best Start package gives free money to everyone who, who has a baby in that first year. And members opposite have been hilarious about the benefits or the, or the non-benefits of universality and targeted assistance during the debate. We, got, we heard um, Dr Webb from the member for Christchurch Central standing up earlier on and lauding the benefits of this highly targeted social assistance, except this is not targeted. This is not targeted, this is universal, and it's completely untargeted. Um, it should also be called, Madam Chair, the Families Package Untargeted Generous Spending Bill, because the winter energy payment is the exact opposite of targeted assistance, Madam Chair. We should also call it the uh, Families Package Spaghetti of Entitlements Bill, because what is, what is concerning about this is the, just the further complication of an already complicated taxation and benefit system. We're reintroducing the independent earner tax credit. That, that, uh, that credit that the national government repealed in the 2017 budget, well, that's coming back in. With all the complications that it creates, you're going to have to apply for it. Most people don't. And then we've got the baby bonus as well. And, and um, Minister, uh, Stephen Joyce's amendments uh, that were put in the earlier part of the debate on this bill to roll the baby bonus, the best start package, into the Working for Families uh, tax credits. Uh, very sensible, my colleague Alistair Scott says, those were opposed by the Labor Party for no good reason. We never heard a real reason why we needed to create a whole new entitlement, the Best Start uh, scheme, and so we have another spaghetti of entitlements. Look, the system is complicated enough as it is already, and the national government in the last budget started the process, the very uh, worthwhile process, of starting to simplify a complicated system, and now we're getting more, just more spaghetti of entitlements. This should also be called, Madam Chair, the Families Package Less money or fewer, less money for 1.2 million Kiwis bill. And that is the really regrettable part about this bill because it reverses those tax cuts that came into effect or are going to come into effect on the 1st of April 2018. And it takes away $1,060 per year from the average Kiwi on the average wage. And that is really disgraceful, Madam Chair. We should also call it, Madam Chair, the Families Package Regressive and an equitable bill, because that is actually what the bill is. I think it is regressive. And this, this government talks a lot about how it wants to be a progressive, reforming, transformational government. Well, what is progressive? What is progressive about taking money from people on the average wage to give it to, give it to students, to give it to students going off to university who would otherwise have gone to university and who over the course of their working life will get an income premium from the degrees that they get that far exceeds the value of the loan that they take out. What is progressive about that? That is regressive. That is inequitable. That is regressive and inequitable. Because those who go to tertiary education benefit hugely from, the, from, from that education. And we think it's fair that they pay for a bit of that on this side of the House. And isn't it interesting, Madam Chair, what was the first move of this government? We talk a lot about child poverty reduction. That's been a theme of the last nine years. The Prime Minister is the Minister for Child Poverty Reduction. What was the first thing they did? What was their first big spending promise once they came into office? The first serious spending uh, effort that they put into place. Hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars, on a tertiary education package on fees free. More money for 18-year-olds to go off university from wealthy areas, from wealthy areas, from kids who'd otherwise go to university anyway, not on child poverty reduction, but on fees-free tertiary education. This bill is regressive, 
it's inequitable and we should rename it so it is, reflects the actual accuracy uh, of what this package actually entails. Madam Chair. I call Barbara Kuriga. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's a pleasure to take a call on the title and commencement. And I, uh, like the last speaker, think the title and commencement of this uh, particular bill is completely the wrong way round, because it talks about the families package, income tax and benefit bills. And what, it, and what this bill has actually done is it has taken income uh, off those people who have gone out there and hard-earned uh, their, with their, with their, their, every day they go to work, they come home and it actually gives them their wages in one pocket and it takes it out of the other pocket. So, uh, and the benefits in this bill, that's an intriguing one because what it's done here is it's actually given the benefits largely to the wrong people. So it's given $60 a week uh, to those people with young families, and that's fine if you're going to target it and you're going to give it to those families that need it. But actually, we've heard a few times today about spray and walk away, and this may well be the spray and walk away bill, because actually you're going to spread it around. You're going to ask people with the home, uh, the heating package, the energy package, to give it back if they don't want it. So you're just going to spray it around, walk away, and hope that people are going to come along and go through the red tape that the red party puts in place to come along and give it back. And actually, it's not targeted at all. It's just all over the place. And what disappoints me, if we look at the objectives in here, it talks about this bill providing targeted social assistance. Now, I've heard Grant Robertson say that it's not all about the dollars and cents. It's actually about what we can do for families. So, Minister Robertson, what I would like to say to you is that this package alone is not going to do what you think it's going to do in terms of getting 88,000 children out of poverty, because uh, unless you do the other targeted uh, social things that go with the money, you're not going to achieve the result. So what it says here is it's part of the government's focus on ensuring children get the best start in life and complements other legislation. So you've made a bill here that is so tight that every time we've tried to link it to something else, um, you've broken that chain. And you, people have sat in the chair, ministers have sat in the chair today, and they've talked about being able to link the data. So we asked a lot of questions about you know, the energy package, people going overseas, they can go overseas for a period of time. Um, if they do, they have to pay it back. We're actually told that the government departments are linked up. Um, that's really funny because every time we talk about limit, linking up government departments and using data for social investment or for any other sort of social assistance, we get pushed back and we get told by members of this government, particularly the Green Party over there, that it breaches privacy. So this is not targeted social assistance and neither is it social assistance. It's actually taking money off those people that earn it. And Duncan Webb, I think we had the conversation last night about the fact that it's, it's hardworking truck drivers, it's plumbers, it's electricians, it's all those people out in the workforce. You put together housing targets, you put in roading targets, you put a whole lot of things, and then what you're doing is you're going and penalising the people that uh, are doing all those projects for you by taking those uh, tax cuts out of their Excuse pockets. Me. Excuse me, not for me. Sorry, sorry, Madam Speaker. The other question I'd like to ask is why are we repealing uh, the uh, the tax that was the tax cuts that were uh, aligned to come in on the 1st of April? And a lot of these benefits are starting on the 1st of July. Can I suggest that maybe that's got something to do with the fact that uh, we're just trying to squeeze a little bit more money out here? If, we, if, if the government was really serious and the minister was really serious about this, then the minister would actually put these so-called benefits, and we can disagree on what we call the benefits, but he, the minister would put this in place on the 1st of April 2018 so that that could fill in. Um, that, and he's, he's just trying to create a gap so he can make his own uh, budget balance. So he's leaving 90 days uh, where they uh, don't have to pay anything, buying themselves a, a gap. 
The other thing that's become very clear uh, by turning down uh, Louise Upston's SOP just before is that this government is very reluctant to measure and manage the things that they're putting in place. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, the question is that Clause 1 stand part. All those in favour say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. no. The ayes have it. No. A party vote is called for. The clerk will conduct a party vote. New Zealand National.